Part two, getting those kids hooked on learning. So Dave has some things he calls hooks, which are ways, ideas, strategies to get kids really excited and engaged with what you're teaching, okay? So we're gonna cover each hook, but first I wanna tell you the big questions you should be asking yourself about every lesson, and that is, how can you make a lesson just incredibly entertaining? How can you make it unforgettable? How can you make your, your students excited to show up to your classroom? You should be asking yourself these questions for every lesson that you're teaching, even if it's not an amazing lesson, if it's just your standard lesson. You need to be thinking, how can I get kids to be excited about this? So we're gonna give you some ideas, we're gonna give you some hooks, so let's get started. Okay, the first category is movement, and the first, um, the first hook is kinesthetic. So this is to use any movement or physical activity during a lesson. The example is the walk and talk. Students took a piece of paper, a pen, and a clipboard, and they viewed posters around the school. So they filled in answers at each poster. Simple idea. There's nothing amazing here, except for they're getting to leave the classroom. That's, that's something we could all do. So you should ask yourselves, could you do a human simulation? Um, could you use dance or motions to show a process? Can you incorporate movement in any way? The next movement hook is called the people prop. So this is to use students to represent objects or symbols. The example is an electrical circuit. So students represented the movement of electricity to show the difference in current and voltage. So how fast they were moving and how many students were moving at one time represented that flow of electricity. <clears throat> Some questions to get you started. Can you create a human graph or equation? Could students become a process? Could students become an object? The safari hook. This is to teach a lesson anywhere except your classroom. So this example is the baseball field. This teacher loved baseball and had um, a little system for how writing a good essay was like running the bases. So first base, second base, third base, home run. And so he taught this method to the students and then they constructed a piece of writing. So ask yourself, where can we go in this building that would be comfortable for learning? Where's some other place? Could we go outside? Now for the arts. Now we have drawing, painting, coloring, colored pencils, whatever you, whatever art supplies you have. This is when students use any kind of art to express their understanding. The example is to paint analogy. So students painted a picture that showed an abstract comparison to the properties of ionic or covalent compounds. This could be used for any concept, any idea. You know, you make it abstract, they need to have an analogy. Ask yourself, could my students take a picture to show me they understand? Can I show a piece of art that represents the point I'm making? Could my students draw their notes today? If you haven't heard of sketch notes, you need to look it up. They're really, really fun and kids love it. It's a great way to get them excited about taking notes. The music hook. This is to use music to express an idea or set the mood. So the example was the coffee house and the teacher played blues music, uh, made some coffee, turned down the lights while students entered on the day they would present their poems. The cool thing about this is um, he really went all out with the coffee house theme. He had kids snap their fingers to indicate their applause, which is kind of a thing, you know, artists do to be quiet and respectful and then still show you like something. Uh, so ask yourself, is there a song I could use to set the mood for my lesson? Could students pick a song that represented some idea that we're learning? Could you change the lyrics of a song to teach some concept, you know, to have to teach it in song? And um, if you're good at writing lyrics, you could sing it or the students could sing it. Okay, next we have dance and trauma. This is when students dance or act out some process or event. So the example is the puppet show. Students created puppet shows that characterize the personalities or reactivities of different elements on the periodic table. So ask yourself, could a dance be used to help kids remember a process? 
Could students impersonate some famous or historical person? Could students write a script or even create a video that represented something you were learning about? And the craft hook. To use basic crafts to show an idea or represent a strategy. The chair design challenge. Uh, this was a team building activity that a teacher did where students used crafts to design a chair for a specific type of person, like um, a handicapped person, um, a blind person, uh, a really young person, an older person. So there was some different scenarios there. And then they built it out of Play-Doh and sticks and they, then they evaluated the designs. They evaluated each other's designs to see if it was good. So you could ask yourself, what can my students make that relates to the material? Is there an origami or a foldable that could be used in this lesson? So the stage, redesigning your room. Could you change the look of your classroom to reflect the theme of a lesson? Um, one example is a teacher decorated the entrance of her room and the inside of her room as a surgery room and students performed surgery to match up functions and their graphs correctly. So they were just basically gluing them together, but there was just the theme of that they were doing surgery. So ask yourself, can you decorate the entrance to your room? Um, a lot of classrooms are actually the perfect size to get a shower rod an adjustable shower rod where you could hang curtains and you can hang shower curtains just to kind of change the entrance, get some excitement out there in the hallway. Could you change the desks around to look like something else? Are there decorations or is there some audio or some video clips you could be playing that could kind of set the, the theme of your lesson? Um, the board message. Write something on the board that sparks curiosity or interest. The zombies are loose. So um, this message was on the board for one teacher and a YouTube of zombies was playing on the projector. And so students were reviewing for a test and solving problems as quickly as possible to try to keep the zombies from attacking. So it just kind of added that, you know, little extra pizzazz to the lesson to make doing some problems worthwhile. No one wants to get attacked by zombies. So what kind of message could you write on your board that would just cause a buzz, make kids start saying, what, what is going on? What is that all about? Um, and they start, you know, what's something that would make them start asking you questions like, hey, I see on the calendar, we have the zombie attack coming. What is that? Could you use a QR code or an image or a video just to get students interested, you know, that you're just playing or you just have this QR code on their desk and they're like, what? Costumes and props. Dress up like a character or some type of person. So this is an example of molecular murder. The teacher dressed up as a robot cop and greeted students at the door. I'm just gonna tell you, that was me. Hello, I am Driskill, the robot cop. This lesson required students to determine the identity of a molecule based on the properties and the atoms that were discovered. And uh, kids were pretty excited about it and it's a pretty tough lesson. And all I had to do is dress up like a robot cop and act like, you know, talk like a robot. Okay, so ask yourself, can you turn a lesson into some theme that has a character? Uh, what costumes do you already own that you can kind of use in a lesson? Is there some accessory that could be part of a theme? You know, are, are there um, plastic fish or is there a net or is there, um, you know, a, a bunch of trash bags, you know, just, I, I don't know what you would use those props for, but I, give me some time, I could probably think of something. But just think, what are some ordinary things you have around your house that could be part of something? The audience participation hook. So use students to make noises or motions to add to the lesson. So this was called anger management. So students were discussing conflict resolution as part of a storyline. Okay, so they're reading a story and, and the teacher's talking about, you know, how you resolve a conflict in a story. And the teacher prearranged for a student to stand up and challenge his ideas. So none of the other kids knew this was gonna happen. And uh, then, then the kid storms out of the room, you know. And everyone's like, oh my gosh. And so this was an, ex an example of conflict. And so the teacher used that, you know, got kids all confused and thinking there was this crazy situation going on. This kid's gonna go to detention. And really it was just an example of conflict. 
So are there chants or noises that you could use in the lesson? Could a student be cued for a pre-arranged bowl in the lesson? Could students volunteer, you know, to do something or to show a process? The mystery bag hook. Have a container full of something that's a mystery to the students. Maybe a box on the table, a little brown bag folded up, maybe a gift bag. Uh, here's the example, a breakout. Students had to solve a series of math problems correctly, and each set of you know problems led to some new clue with new problems. And finally, in the end, it gave a clue about what was in the box. So there was this box you know, on the table. And the first group to guess correctly got to wear headphones during the test. So there actually was um, nothing that the kid got in the box. So it's not like you're gonna have a box of candy. I mean, that, that would be fun too. But, um, you know, it was just a, a mystery. What's in there? And so they got to wear headphones during the test. So ask yourself, what could I hide in a container that relates to this lesson? Could I have actual treats in a box and tell kids they need to solve problems to collect clues to find the box? Maybe it's hidden somewhere. The magic show. So use a trick like magic or a brain teaser or even a chemical reaction to demonstrate some idea or process. So this was called, what do you see? Students were shown the same picture that had two actual pictures in it. So you've seen these where, you know, one of them is a man sitting on a hill and then you look at it a little bit longer and you see actually that's a, a little house and it's in, it's a forest. So um, kids were all looked at the same picture but different kids saw the different pictures first. So this was used as a discussion point for talking about the different perspectives perspectives of witnesses during crime. So this was used um, like during a forensics unit. So do you know a magic trick that you could teach students? Is there a cool demonstration that could show this concept in action? Hmm. Maybe you can finally put those hula hoop skills to use, right? Okay, stories and lecture to tell a story. So use a story from a book or your past or one you've heard about in the news. Here's an example, it's called the Hainted Car. So when auto tech students started their unit on transmissions, the teacher read a Missouri legend called the Hainted Car about a car moving in the dark that was actually being pushed by someone. Ooh, scary. Uh, you know, it was just a funny little story. Learning about transmissions, um, evidently, the teacher didn't, this doesn't think kids are enjoying learning about transmissions as much. There is actually some reading that goes along with that. And uh, so he used this story to kind of get kids excited about it. They laughed and thought it was very funny and they went from there. So <clears throat> what storytelling technique could you use to enhance a story? Is there a character in a story that could be used as an example? Is there a story that could be used as an analogy to a concept? So maybe it has nothing to do with the concept, but the story itself could be abstractly related. To sue with students. So become a student, become an audience member. Um, go, go sit down with them or present your lesson from a different location in the room. <clears throat> this is called race car review and so the teacher organized the desks into like six so it, it was kind of a, a minivan type of setup so two two and two and the teacher sat with the students so different groups came up and sat in the car and she pretended to, to drive a car while a student went at the front projected quiz questions with the projector the group had 30 seconds to answer or the car would crash or go through a time warp, or it was gonna go off a cliff. So they had 30 seconds to together solve some problem. So it's used as a review. So ask yourself, how can I participate in an activity instead of leading it? Can I teach from a location closer to students? Stories and lecture, the taboo. Present a topic as if it's a secret or it's forbidden. This is the periodic cheat sheet. A teacher told her students that she was going to show them how to use the group in periodic numbers as a shortcut to drawing atomic models. But the other teachers would not like that at all, so they needed to stay quiet about it. And then guess what? The kids learned about the groups and the periods, which is really was the goal of the lesson anyway. So can you position your topic as forbidden even though it isn't? Could you tell a story 
and pose it as kind of a secret about some person or event that's related to the learning goal. Maybe you can tell them something about a historical figure that maybe most people don't know. Mime. I'll go ahead and talk. I'm not going to mind through this. A teacher pretended that she lost her voice and she used animated charades, words on paper, you know, and images on the projector to teach about a period of history. Um, so students were like really in tune because she couldn't talk. So they were really watching what she was doing and they were encouraged to ask questions, you know, like yes and no questions, things that she could answer with her body. And she had a lot of fun during that lesson and so did the kids. So can I use words or short phrases to teach a lesson? So if you could, then being a mime would be great. Can I create a Pictionary type of activity where kids act out ideas? Could students be asked to mime an answer to a question? The teaser. So do something in advance to make kids wonder about your lesson. So um, this teacher told kids, hey, bring blankets on Thursday. She kept telling them that over and over. Actually, it was a male teacher, but the teacher told kids several days in advance to bring blankets. And, they, and of course the kids are like, why, why, why? And uh, then when they got there that day, they found out he was taking them outside to work. It was a very cold winter day so that they could gain more perspective on being cold like these characters in the story. So the characters in the story were very, very cold and he really wanted them to have that cold experience. But he kept telling them bring blankets because they, they were, you know, like all talking about why do we gotta bring blankets? What's going on? What can I say or do that will make kids wonder about my next class? What would be the movie trailer of my lesson? What would that, what would be included in that? Think about that. going backwards. So start a lesson at the end and work towards the beginning. So this specific example is um, creating stories. So students wrote the last line of a story, the last line, like, and then he decided to run away and he lived happily ever after. And then they handed the paper to another student who had to write the next sentence, which was would have been the previous sentence. They did this six times, six exchanges, and so the very sixth sentence, which would be the first line in the story, had to start with once upon a time. So this really got kids thinking creatively, and it really, really required uh, some significant thought about how to work backwards like that. Could you let students know what questions they'll be able to answer after the lesson? Could you show them an end product? that will make them want to learn the skills so that they could get there and create that same type of product themselves. Okay, mission impossible. So turn your lesson into a challenge or a puzzle or some kind of mystery. So the example is the breakout. So students were played a message from Dr. Evil, who was hiding from the government but has an important message for the students. And so students had to solve these different math and logic puzzles to decipher the message, which by the way was math rocks. And they really loved that. Could I create a scavenger hunt or mystery that reviews content? Could you tell students that it's impossible to finish this assignment or offer an incentive for solving it? Reality TV. So turn a unit or a lesson into a theme like Survivor or Amazing Race. So the example was the ultimate survivor. So cl different classes, so this particular teacher taught um, several of the same class. And so each class competed against the other classes to earn the highest quiz averages and work completion rates. And there were some behavior points. So their points were collecting over time. And they want to, they were trying to earn, uh, to become the surviving class and earn the ultimate party package. So could you incorporate a fear factor or a survivor or amazing race type of theme into a unit or just a lesson? Maybe you could divide students into tribes or clans or families or houses. Uh, could you teach a lesson maybe that's themed after popular apps like Clash of Clans or Angry Birds or Fortnite? Uh, Angry Birds and Fortnite, I know, have a lot of math 
that could be analyzed in those. So that could be a fun way to make math a little more engaging. So check that out if you're a math teacher. Okay, the contest. So turn a lesson into a contest or a competition. This is trash get ball. So in my class, the top five Kahoot winners, so whoever places in the top five, they get a chance to make a trash get ball. So they all line up at the trash get ball. And if they're able to make one of two shots, they get to leave class five minutes early. So I change what they earn, you know, every time we play trash get ball. But uh, kids love trash get ball and you gotta call it trash get ball too, okay? They love it. And so just to get a chance to play trash get ball, they really work hard in those cahoots. Cahoots are fun anyway. But what type of game can you play to review or practice content? Can you turn um, some practice problems into challenges? The real life application, so student hobbies. Use student hobbies or their interests to teach the material. So skateboarding physics, students brought in their skateboards and then other students measured those students' displacement speed and acceleration. So those students got to ride their skateboards around at different speeds. And of course they threw in a few, a few tricks as well. Uh, but kids got kind of a real life example of displacement speed and acceleration. What are the hobbies and interests of your students? And so how could you incorporate some of those into a lesson that you teach? Could you maybe show some interesting videos or have students actually perform as part of a lesson? Job skill. So teach students a job or a professional skill. They're always asking, when will I use this in real life? Uh, so here's an example. This was a logo and team name. So students used Google Drawings to design a logo for their team. So they were gonna be in this team for several weeks. And then they inserted that as a header in documents that they created. This particular document was used to pitch their energy generating exercise equipment idea. So this could be used anytime you have a team project, uh, they can design their own logo. So when they present that to the class, you know, they're like a little mini business. So that could be used for any type of team activity where they're gonna present. They're very, very proud of those logos and team names. So can you relate your lesson to an actual job skill? What other reasons can you give to your students to learn the material other than it's on the test? And you know, they really should be asking that, those questions. Why is this useful? That, that's a good question. And you know what I always tell them? I say, you know what? I'm not really teaching you about the periodic table or about solving equations. I'm teaching you how to learn and use your brain. So you're gonna use your brain forever. This is the only brain you get and this is your only chance to have me as a teacher and to get a free education, you know, here in the school. So after this, you're gonna have to pay for it. So, so take advantage of it, you know, you're, you're gonna use that brain forever. Don't forget to tell them that. Sometimes when they say, when am I gonna learn this? I'm never gonna learn, or I'm never gonna need to learn this. I say, well, you're gonna use your brain, aren't you? And yes, they are. Okay, um, how about life changing? So turn a lesson into something inspirational. This is an example paying for college. Students completed an interactive um, next generation personal finance activity and a game. And if you haven't checked out their website, you need to. Tons of free resources and they're awesome. Any teacher could find time to squeeze one of these in, no matter what you teach. But uh, this particular one had students make choices about their spending while they're in college. So it's like this little game. They're making these choices, these real life choices. And many kids ended up in debt, which was a real eye-opener for them. They really hadn't expected that. They thought these were normal choices that everyone made. And then some kids got all this debt and some kids didn't. And it was just a great way to talk about how do you um, finance college, how do you make it through college without going into a lot of debt. So could you turn your lesson into something inspirational? Or what type of questions could you ask that would allow students to think deeply about their future or about their lives? Student directed. So let students choose what they're gonna study or how they're going to show you they've learned something. This is an example of the art show. So uh, students needed to explain this art piece. So they, they had done this art piece, actually an art class, but it could be for an art assignment that you've done in any class. And they either got to blog about it 
they could make a public presentation. So they could be standing there in front of a group of people and present it. Or they could use an augmented reality app called Metaverse. And Metaverse is free, but uh, you get an app on your phone and you can take a picture of, a, of something, of an object, and that's a trigger. So that image is the trigger for the app. And you set it up that once that app scans that trigger, something else happens, like an image appears. And so it was actually a, a video of the student, you know, through the phone and they're looking at the art. It's a video of the student explaining that. And so actually anyone that had the Metaverse app could go and hear this kid's presentation. That, I, that was amazing. Metaverse sounds awesome. Haven't actually used it in the classroom, but I'm going to, I'm going to next year. I'm going to get that in because it just sounds so cool. That's called augmented reality. But anyway, how can I make an assignment have autonomy and choice for students? How can you narrow down the learning goals and then let students pick what they're going to learn about? Maybe, you know, here's your selection of options. Pick one to learn about. Current events. Use current events to increase the interest in a lesson. So this was called Black Lives, Blue Lives. And a teacher used the current tension between police and blacks to introduce slavery. So, you know, basically it's kind of still going on. The tension from that, that slavery is still happening today. Is there a hot topic in my content area that I can use to capture students' attention? Could you use some aspect of pop culture to design a lesson? Or what pop culture could I tie into my material? And pop culture is just basically anything that's happening right now. So it's music, it's apps, it's augmented reality, it's TV shows, it's um, fashion. So really, what can you tie in from kids' current life, the current pop culture? Okay, these are just a few extras. So these don't really have a category, so they just call them extras. The techno is. So use some technology, maybe some robots or some block coding or just some other special kind of program. The example is music reflection. So the music teacher had students record themselves playing an instrument or singing a song whichever one that student did. And then they embedded that video into a slideshow and they played it, it, you know, several times. They actually played it several times. And then they wrote a reflection about their strengths and weaknesses and basically how they could improve. So could you turn your lesson into a digital lesson or allow the assignment to be com completed completely online, digitally? Could a student become the teacher, maybe, to help the new technology? They do know a lot. Chef, use food as part of a lesson. You know kids are gonna love you if you can pull this one off and get some ideas for food. Uh, this is called trail mix dimensional analysis. So students were given the mass of each ingredient. So they had like three or four ingredients. And then they knew the mass of one item, like one pretzel. And they use dimensional analysis then to figure out how many of each ingredient to add to their bag to make their trail mix. How can I relate this lesson to food or to a recipe? Can I use food and drink as an incentive to complete a lesson? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Hey, you can buy big things of nacho cheese if you teach lots of, lots of students. They're $8, okay? And then a bag, a couple bags of chips, Hopefully your school can help you pay for it, but if not, you can still do it on the cheap. You can have like the ultimate party package. You need to do it. Kids will love it. They'll never forget you for that one. You bring food, they won't forget you. Um, a mnemonic device. So use any kind of pattern to help kids remember information. So pirate, that's a perfect example of using a simple word to remember all the characteristics of a great teacher. Let's see if you can remember. There's P for pirate, I for immersion, R for report, A for ask and analyze, T for transform, and E is for enthusiasm. Woo -woo! So is there a pattern that can help students remember? Could you design your own mnemonic so students would be able to recall the information easier? Could students design their own memory tool for themselves to use, their very own? Extra credit, kids are always asking, you know, on the last day of the semester, what can I do to fix my grade? <laughs> so uh, give extra credit or a special privilege to students who complete a lesson. So 
I really don't give very much extra credit. Really, you just gotta do the work that's assigned, but I do give a headphone pass. So if students complete an extension or some kind of enrichment activity before the test, I allow them to wear their headphones during the test. So there's a lot of things teachers give away, like headphones or having your cell phone out, that I think you can actually use those as special powers and you really don't have to spend any money or anything. You know, you just, you restrict it in the beginning and then you just slowly give it back to them. What high interest enrichment lesson could I offer to students? What can I design or how can I design an independent activity that could create a lifelong memory?